welcome to episode 77 of the Arctic Knitting Podcast. My name is Emilia and I am coming to you from the northern part of Norway. If you are a returning viewer then welcome back, it's really good to see you. I've been on a bit of a hiatus uh, for the better part of a year. I think my last episode was back in April and now it's January. But I decided that I want to get back into this because I really really missed you. And thank you so much to everyone who has reached out to me saying that you miss me and that you hope I'm doing fine. I am doing good. I have just been... Well, life happened. Basically, I said in the beginning of 2020, my thoughts about the year to come was that at least it isn't going to be worse than 2019. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> 2020 past and um, 2021 is there. It doesn't look good so far, but here we are. I have been doing quite a bit of crafting the last year. Uh, I have been knitting a bit. I've also, if you have been following following me on Instagram, where you can find me as Arctic Knitting, you maybe know that I have bought a knitting machine. I haven't used it as much as I wanted to. I bought it straight before Christmas and I had to pack it away to make the house ready for Christmas and stuff like that. But uh, you probably see a bit, little bit of machine knitting on this channel as well. I thought that because it's really really hard to like catch you up on a year of knitting. So I'm not going to try to do that. Today I'm going to show you some of the latest finished objects. I've written a list of things that I want to show you. Which basically means that I have content for the next few episodes. Which is good, because sometimes when you are trying to make a podcast, it's really hard to find stuff to talk about. But now I have, I have enough. So, let's just get into it. I'm going to show you some finished objects today. And the first one is, the first one you have actually seen before. I was knitting on this the last time I podcasted. It's been, I think it was on the needles for the better part of a year. And this is the Tanya sweater. Uh, it's a pattern by Caitlin Hunter. I made it. it it's let's see if you can see it. It has a nice lace part at the bottom. I really love this. It's really good to wear with these kind of skate dresses. I started this a long time ago, and I it's knit bottom up, which means that you do the lace first and then you pick up for. Then you, yeah, you did the lace first, then it's stuck in that in the round for a bit, then it's stuck in that back and forth, flat, and then you pick up for the arms and knit them down. And the arms are just like this long, it's not much work. But I stopped when I was about here on the second arm. And when I picked it back up, I thought that I would have to do the second arm. and pick up around the neck to make the neck edge and I finished the arm which was only like I think it was 14 rounds on like 40 stitches and then I was going to start picking up and I realized that I had already done it so it was basically done in I think I used like 15 minutes to finish it it was I really enjoyed knitting the lace part I really enjoyed knitting the whole part it's um, it's a gorgeous it's a gorgeous knit and I have been enjoying quite a bit of stocking at this year because it's thoughtless knitting, which I... I go back and forth between having projects that makes me think a lot and having projects that is just flying off needles. And this is one of those that when you finish the lace part, it's just stocking at. It's a really simple and easy knit. And it's also very wearable. I wasn't sure about these short sleeves because I really like long sleeves, but and I was thinking about making the sleeves longer, but then I decided that I really liked the look of it and I can always pick back the ribbing and make the sleeves longer later, but I don't think I'm going to do that. The yarn that I use for this is my hand dyed. It's the Merino sock base in the colorway concrete, which is a basic grey. And then I used uh, one strand of air from the Stor Alpaca, which is your basic thin mohair, silk mohair yarn. I use that alongside or knit them double 
and I really enjoy the result of this. I'm going to see if I can take if I can find some photos to like pop on top of the video so that you can see it, see this better more clearly. I think this is going to get a lot of wear both now during the winter. It's not really winter outside. Um, we don't have any snow. But it's going to get a lot of wear now. I can always chuck cardigan over it and probably towards summer as well because summer if the are in the Arctic isn't really yeah you can wear wool basically so finish this and I've been wearing it a lot I've really been enjoying though the whole mohair thing I didn't think I would mohair hasn't really been something I enjoyed but I have knit at least I have this and I have one cardigan and one sweater that I have knit with mohair and I have two more and a vest and I have two more project, projects planned out which I have the yarn ready for but they are not the first thing that I'm going to cast on. Another thing I just recently finished like after Christmas it might even have been after New Year's is a sweater that I knit for Ludwig and if you have been following this podcast earlier you know who Ludwig is. Ludwig is my five year old son. He's actually five and a half. He's growing. He's getting so much bigger and I decided to knit him a sweater uh, I work part-time in a yarn store and this yarn from that store and it's also a pattern that I bought there this is the booklet in which you can find the pattern it is booklet 2003 from which basically means that this booklet number three in 2020 uh, from Sun and Scan, which is one of the big Norwegian mills and working in the yarn store, even though I only work there every now and then because I have another job, uh, a full-time job, that is part-time, but anyways. Working in the yarn store, I see a lot of the commercial Norwegian knitting and I spend a lot of time around the commercial Norwegian yarn, which you are going to see in the projects that I have been making. It's quite a bit of patterns from Roman Sannes and there's also quite a bit of yarn from Roman Sannes. Whereas I before really enjoyed getting the yarn from abroad, it's had to, it had to be new and exciting and something fun and I really enjoyed, and I'd sti I still do, I still do, uh, but I really enjoyed hand dyed. Now I spend so much of my time around commercial Norwegian yarns and I get so much inspiration from them so that's where m that's what I use for most of my projects and also I have been knitting quite a bit of patterns from them. Uh, this particular project is made from a yarn called Sun called Sunnis Kus which is a blow yarn. I don't have any of it here. Oh, I actually do. This is a different color. Actually, I've used this color in this one. But this is Sunnis Goose, so you can see that it's one of those blow yarn. The fiber content of this is 62% baby alpaca, 9% wool and 29% nylon. And the thing with these blow yarns are that it's really hard to see. But it has like, I don't think you can see that, but it has like this knitted stocking where the fiber are blown into the knitted stocks stocking which basically means that you can get a yarn uh, this is 150 meters for 50 grams which means 300 meters for 100 grams and you can knit it up on 5.5 millimeter needles uh, so you will get a chunk knit ahead of it which is also quite lightweight whereas uh, at least in Norway, I know that these kind of things are more available abroad or has been, but at least in Norway, if you're going to need something on 6mm needles, you would have to go to Fritid Skarn or Bums, which only has like about 70, I think it's 70 for Fritid Skarn and 83 for Bums. But there's, those are wool yarns and you get fewer meters per 50 grams, which means that the garments are going to be heavier. Uh, but I knitted this. I'm going to show. I'm going to show you what I knitted. That's what I'm here for. I knitted this for Ludwig. Uh, this is. You can see the the arms are quite narrow. Uh, I haven't tried this on him, but it's. I think it will be okay. I knitted. This is actually the eight year old size, but I think I might have been knitting a little bit tight. I didn't do a gauge swatch because. 
I did just didn't. And this is knitted the traditional Norwegian way. I'm not sure if it's the traditional way, but it's the way most of them, most of the Norwegian patterns are written, even though it seems to be changing a little bit. It's written bottom up. Start with the body of the sweater, then you knit the arms, join them both on one longer circular needles and you knit the yoke. And this yoke has four colors. Which I didn't realize it when I started it, but it has several places, like up here in the zigzags, and also a couple of rows here where you have three colors. You can see that you have the green, and you have the gray, and you have the yellow, and you have three colors in one round, which I really don't like. I find it fiddly to do. And when I need a sweater for Ludwig, I just two colors, fine. The three colors are it's such a hassle to work with, and I have to have I need continentals, so I have two strands on my left finger, and then I have the last one, so I I flick with one color and knit continental with two others. And on this sweater, I even had two rounds with four colors, which basically means that the yarn balls are flying everywhere, and I have two skeins on my right and two skeins on my left, and it's really hard to keep the gauge when you have so many strands of yarn. But it, it, it turned out okay. Uh, you can see that it's really hard to see, but you can see that the gauge is a little bit tighter here, where I have anything with four strands. But it's okay for a sweater from my own son. And um, yeah. I think it's really pretty though. Uh, the thing is that the booklet that this came from has more. It's called Mjuk til barn, which basically means soft for kids. And it has more sweaters that I want to make. But it also has this vest that I want to show you. Which is a fair isle vest that I kind of want to make for Ludwig. This is knitted in mini alpaca. And that is 100% fingering weight alpaca yarn. I don't enjoy alpaca. It's not that I hate the fiber. It's alpaca in that, but I don't enjoy the 100% alpaca yarns because they are just so soft and so slippery slippery which means that the color work i don't like how color work how color work, color works looks in alpaca also the stitches when you have knitted in wool the stitches sort of yeah it's just when you wash wool with color work the stitches opens up but they don't open up they close the thing and it looks even but with alpaca this you can still see the strands of yarn and the stitches sort of more of opened up and you can see the strands on the back of it and also it has a tendency to to sag a bit which i which isn't the look that i like the vest is supposed to be knitted in mini alpaca but if i'm going to knit it i'm going to knit it in either something a fingering weight wool yarn um yeah uh, I also have another booklet that I just picked up because I had it under under the table here. Uh, it's this, it's 2008 from Sones. And in this there is this pattern that I really really want to make. I actually have the arm for it. I think you can see it now. Uh, it's a sweater for kids and a vest for adults. Um, it's the Fair Isle style of it and I want both of them. I actually have yarn for both of them and I'm thinking about making both of them for myself because I'm a selfish knitter. Uh, the sweater in this actually is a child side garment but I have been looking up the measurements and surprise surprise I can totally pull off wearing a child garment. If I need 10 years old that would be enough but I'm going to make it 12 years. I might have to make the sleeves a little bit longer but I don't even think I have to and um, which is a good place to be like size wise, size wise I can use pattern for both I can use the extra small in the pattern for adults and I can use the 12 year or 10 year old size in pattern for, for kids which is a tip if you have if you have kids that are that I that age you can use extra small and also if you if you're tiny yourself you could always check out the the children garments, lots of them are really, really nice. 
I'm planning on knitting those in Sunday, which is a pretty new yarn from Sun is Gone. I think it came out like maybe last January, at least in 2020. And it is 100% non-superwash merino. And this is the first non-superwash merino that I have been able to find in the Norwegian market, which is absolutely, the yarn is absolutely gorgeous and I really recommend trying it out if you haven't already. It works really good. I have been knitting it by itself. I have been knitting it held double and I've also been knitting it held with one strand of mohair and all of those. It's just, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's been, it's, it's one of my most used yarn in 2020. I haven't done any statistics on what I've been knitting in 2020, but I think that Sunday is definitely my most used, my most used yarn. Uh, then when 2021 came along, I decided that I was going to have this pile. I'm in my living room now. I'm actually in my sofa and I have this pile over here with works in progress. I also have more upstairs. And I decided to just start on top of the pile and work my way down. That's how this got finished. It's also how the sweater got finished. And then I had some more projects that I finished off that I'm going to show you another time. But then I came down to... A pair of selfie mittens that I started a year ago or something. I have knitted one of these. This is a basic Norwegian style mitten. The pattern is from this booklet from Roma. It's called LVS1. I have shown off this before. It's one of my most used booklets. And I had already finished one. This is a male size and I decided that I'm just going to finish it off knit the other one. So now I have a pair of these. Then I had more yarn left so I decided to revert the color and knit a pair in a woman's size. So basically that's a pair of matching mittens that isn't all matchy matchy and I really enjoy that. But I still had more yarn left because I had three skeins of each color so I casted on another pair of women's mitts and this time I decided to make, because here I have, this one is blue with white, the women's one, so I decided to make another pattern and make it white with blue. Of course, after, I really enjoy this pattern, it's, it's really nice and I really enjoyed, I really like the pattern on the top for this one. Yeah, I have to fix that. It's a little bit of a mistake there. You can see it there. Which basically meant that I had three pairs of finished selby mittens. One for, one for a male and two for women. But I still had a little bit of yarn left. Just, just too much to like, it's too much to throw it away. Too little to really make anything. I wasn't even sure it was going to be enough of child size. So I decided to make, I decided to go buy two more skeins and actually managed to find the same, same dye lot and I made the same pattern for a male. Which basically meant that four skeins of blue and four skeins of the white was enough to make four pair of mittens. If you have one skein, this is, this is knitted uh, using Roma 3 ply. And if you have one skein of each, you can make any of these for this female size, at least if you put in some stripes on the cuff. But it's not sure that you are going to have enough to knit. If you're going, if you, if you come to the store that I'm working and working and are going to make mittens for a male, I will tell you that you should probably buy two skeins of, for this instance, the blue, the main color. Uh, I'm not completely sure what to do with these mittens because it's like four pairs and to be honest I have quite a bit of mittens and Christmas is just over and I'm not really big on giving gifts for every occasion so I think these might go into the store as and I'll sell them there or either in my web store or in the physical store that I work in because yeah so if you want to buy any of these, you could just shoot me a message and we'll work something out. Knitting mittens for sale, like selling the 
Finnish mittens is not something I'm planning on doing at all because it takes way too much time and I have so many other things I want to knit but every now and then I get on a mitten kick and I knit all the mittens and I kind of don't want them laying around in the house I want them to get used and loved and also to be honest we have too much stuff I have too much stuff and I want to get rid of some stuff yeah I think that's all I have to show you today, uh, like creative wise, it's uh, I just finished off these mittens. I haven't casted on something new, and I haven't figured out what project to work on next. But I hope that I probably find something right after I recorded this that I want to work on. Uh, also, I'm going to put up a few episodes now. I'm going to try to do this more consistent. But I have more knitting to show you, and I also have some. Um, machine I think that I want to show you. Uh, let me know if you're interested in that. I'm not really sure what my audience, what you guys would like because most of you are hand knitters and I don't, I'm not sure if, you, if you're interested in seeing my machine knitting adventure. Comment down below. Normally I would end the episode with a little bit of life bladder but it's kind of a year to catch up on so I'm going to try to say something. I still live in the same place, I still have Ludwig with me, everything is fine. We are doing well. Many of you have been worried that things are not okay. It's it's okay. Uh, 2020 was just a year that started out with me getting a new job. It's been overwhelming and it's also my first year ever living alone, which is actually it turns out to be quite wonderful. I have been doing some home renovations. Uh, I bought this house in February of last year, which is the house that I used to own with my with Ludwig's father, but I was able to buy his share of the house as well. And things have been good. It's just that the the whole the whole podcast and social media hasn't been it's not what I have been focusing on in 2020. 2020 was actually not a bad year for me. Of course, you had the whole pandemic and social distancing and it, all of those. But with everything considered, 2020 turned out to be a pretty good year for me personally. And I hope that every single one of you out there are doing okay. I know that we are now starting, at least in Norway, the social distancing is... We haven't been... We haven't been in lockdown like many other countries. I've been able to go to work. But now it's... The virus is getting more aggressive, I think. Uh, but we are being told to stay at home and avoid crowds and all that stuff, which... I'm basically, I'm doing fine with it. Uh, but I haven't been in this for the better part of a year. Uh, most of the fall also, I'm in the north. And hasn't really been many cases up here. I think in my hometown it's been like seven in total since March of last year. So we're lucky. Um, haven't seen much of that virus even though of course I do I do follow the national guidelines for how to act and all of that. But what I was trying to say is that I hope that every single one of you are doing okay. I know it's kind of cheesy to say it, but I hope you're doing the best of the situation and if you have kids at home and home office and everything, just know that... Oh, I don't know what I want you to know. Hopefully it will get better soon. I really hope it will get better soon. It was really nice talking to you. Please leave a comment down below and let me know if there's anything... If you have any questions or anything. And it was nice talking to you. See you soon. Bye.